guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Reading Bear, and I hope you are ready for some more stories. And today, we'll take a look at some new I don't work here lady content. If you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comment. And now, let's dive right into the stories. The first story is titled I do, but currently don't work here Karen. So this is the first time I've really had an, I don't work here, moment, and it's a little different from most because, most unfortunately, I do work there, but I am currently off due to a recent biopsy, being on holiday so apologies if this doesn't fit in here. So a couple days ago I had decided to head into the shop I work at to get some things for dinner, seeing as it's cheaper with my employee discount than having it ordered in. I am also on the days where I am expected to start being mobile but not do too much heavy lifting, so I wasn't going in for a lot. I'm in the most obvious non-uniform outfit possible, a pair of loose-fitting cotton trousers that honestly could pass as PJ pants, and an oversized black hoodie. I looked like I'd just blown in from off the street honestly but didn't give a damn at this point. So it's clear I wasn't in to work. However most regulars can recognize me easily because I have multicolored hair and no one else really looks like a unicorn puked a galaxy on their head. I had my airpods in as I was wandering around, or waddled in my case really, when I stopped to chat to one of my colleagues who was in. We talked about how my biopsy went, if I was in pain etc before she quickly asked me where something was, she's still a very new colleague. I told her, stuck my airpods back in and old lady shuffled away. A couple of minutes later I'm down the pet food aisle, wanting to get treats for my puppy, when I feel harsh tapping on my shoulder. I jump a tad and end up twinging my biopsy side a little, so now I'm in mild discomfort. Looking over I see one of the most hated regulars. She's always a Karen, who seems to wake up and choose violence on a daily basis. There's always problems with her and honestly I would rather stand toe to toe with the Balrog on speed than deal with her any day. I pull out an airpod and hear that she's already mid rant about how rude I am for ignoring her, she's been after my attention for 5 minutes, what kind of employee am I, I can help out a coworker but not a customer and blah blah blah. When she finally finishes her tirade she points to one of the heavy bags of cat litter on the top shelf and demands I get it down for her. I calmly explain that I'm not allowed to do any heavy lifting ATM, and as I'm not actually working I'm not allowed to anyway as per the store policy, due to the fact that top shelves are for storage and require footstools to reach. With the not so subtle suggestion of, go get someone else. Well this wankstrumpet is having none of it, demanding I help her as she knows I work here, if I don't she'll get the manager, I'm just making up a bullcrap excuse not to help her, yada yada. So while she's mid rant I simply, grab the treats and walk away. I duck into the crisp aisle where thankfully I bump into my boss. I quickly explain how I've pissed off our resident Karen just as she catches up and demands my help again. My manager thankfully stepped in and told her how I'm not obligated to help off the clock while making a small gesture to me to just GTFO of there, which I happily do, all while she is getting more and more pissed and insistent that I get the sack for refusing to help her. I get to the till and have a quick giggle about it with my work friend who was serving, then got the hell out of Dodge before I could experience the return of the Karen on my way out. I know it's not that exciting but thought you might enjoy. The next story is titled Karen gets mad because I'm not an employee in an alcohol only store, was 14 at the time. One day, when I was 14, and looked way younger, I was with my dad in an SAQ, alcohol only store, and as my dad looked at some wine bottles, I wandered around, looking at some bottles with pretty labels. I was wearing a bright pink shirt and a skirt, I had no fashion sense, and the store's employee wore dark red shirts and black pants. This lady walks up to me and asks where the vodka and rum were located. I didn't understand at first, and just told her I didn't know. She looked insulted and, in a semi-yelling voice, told me, well, you should know that. You should try to be more respectful and help me. Confused, I just answered, well, I don't know where the vodka or the rum are, and I'm confused as why I should know that and how it's disrespectful. She was pissed. She started yelling that I should know the store better and should be more polite and how she was going to call the manager, and then stormed off. At that point, my father heard a part of the conversation and came to me asking what happened. I told him, and he looked as confused as me. The lady came back with a man in the store uniform plus a tie. The lady is now red and angry. She's telling him about how his employees are rude and don't know anything. The man looks at me and starts laughing, along with my dad and me. 
I asked her, you really thought I worked here? I'm not even old enough to drive, let alone drink. She looked shocked, then offended. She stormed away without buying anything. Had a great laugh. The next story is titled entitled Man Calls Cops on Me for Parking My Truck Properly. So this happened like a year ago, I'm doing truck driving in a moving company in the big cities and due to that I have to park to some crappy places due to the customers living in crowded places. I had a gig where I had to drive like 150 kilometers to another city to do moving services with a team for a company. So once we got there, we saw that there was a construction work going on right next door which resulted to the part of the sidewalk, which was huge enough for two trucks normally because there were a lot of companies there I assume, being taken by it. Also because it had only one right lane, for safety reasons I had to park my truck partly on the sidewalk so that cars wouldn't run into each other. I made sure that there was enough room for people to go through without having to go by the car road. BTW, this is completely legal in my country to park during the packing of a vehicle. So it took about 30 minutes and there he was, this was around 2 hour packing job. This middle aged guy on a bike ready to conquer the world, eb equals entitled biker. First he came next to my truck and started taking pictures, I didn't mind because this kind of behavior is nothing new to me. Eb. Hey you have to move your truck. Me. No man, I'm in the middle of the work and there was obviously enough room that you could go through. Eb. What if there comes someone with children and a carriage? Cue a woman walking through with a child carriage looking confused because we both look at her. I give Eb a smile, never stopped working BTW. Eb. You know that parking like this is illegal right? Me. No it isn't you can look it up if you want. Eb. Move your truck this is illegal. My co-workers come from the inside to bring more stuff for me to pack into the truck. Co-1. What is going on? Me. Some a-hole is trying to make me move my truck, so nothing unusual, just pay no mind. Co-2. Don't you have anything better to do than to harass people who are trying to do their job? Eb. Move this truck or I'm going to call the police. We all just smile and leave him to his BS and keep working because we know that he can't do anything. The guy then proceeds to make a few phone call, I assume to our company and the police and keep spewing his BS, we just ignore it because we have a lot of places to visit and know we'll be doing at least 2 hours of overtime without him bothering us. Around 15 minutes go by. Eb. Move the truck or I'll call the police. Me. Now smiling. Haha who did you call just now then? Eb sad face. Goes silent for a minute and keeps on spewing then about my illegal parking actions. Then I saw a police car drive behind his back, they looked at the situation, slowed down, smiled and kept on driving. It was the middle of the day so by now there were a lot of trucks all over the place taking up sidewalks in the area, post trucks, vehicles bringing food to stores etc. So I tell him. Me. Dude can't you go harass the other truck drives look around you man. I'm not the only one parked like this, but either way, thanks for the laughs, I really enjoyed this. Eb is fuming at this point so me and my coworkers give up and just tell him to f asterisk k off if he doesn't have to pay our salary for the time that we are using with him instead of the customer. He finally decides to leave, but it isn't over yet, Eb decided to go and post about this incident to Facebook to all his 100 friends and my coworker spotted the post. He basically was rambling how I was an a-hole for parking there and we were disrespectful and, they just thanked me for the laughs they got out of me. First I didn't pay no mind, but then he had also ranted about that he was almost fined for calling the emergency number on us and they warned Eb that if he called again that he would get fined for disrupting the emergency line or some crap. But yeah, happy ending, it was a long ass day, but we got a lot of good laughs about it and the construction workers also laughed, what the hell was that about? and we even told our boss about it who also laughed how some people can be that stupid. The next story is titled I don't work here, but I am happy to help. So about 5 years ago I was homeless and living out of my truck. I was living paycheck to paycheck at a fast food job just to pay my phone bill and buy gas. I was taking showers and doing laundry at a local church in exchange for help on Sundays. They live stream their service to Facebook. So after a while, the church tells me that there is a local food bank that can help me since, I couldn't afford much in the way of decent food as I had nowhere to store perishables. I head to the place, which was another church, and wait for the appointed time to go in. I head inside and it's empty at the moment and I see a place to wait by a table. The next thing to happen is this heavy set gentleman walks in and approaches me with arms out for a hug. I live in a southern state and was raised by my grandparents, so this is common with church people. 
He welcomes me and then asks. Can you take that cardboard out to the recycle bin? Me. Sure, no problem. I take it out then head inside and I see a few more people have arrived and are setting stuff up and he asks me to help set out Karis for the service later. I begin helping and once done I got get back in line at the table where he has taken a seat. He looks up, and then it dawns on him. See this church also has people who do community service help distribute food, and he would sign a document showing they did it. Him. Wait, are you here to get food? Me. Yeah, insert other church name here, said you could help me out. Him. Embarrassed laughing. Oh man I thought you were here to help hand stuff out, why didn't you say anything? Me. I was racy to be helpful, is all. Just how I am. We have a laugh and Het gets me set up with some dry goods and stuff I can eat without cooking. He even had some military MREs donated so that all I needed was some water and I could cook hot meals inside the bag, which was a big help as winter was setting in and I was still in my truck. The heating packs from the MREs also added some warmth to the car after I finished cooking with them. So as I said, not the usual story, but I still think it's a good one. Bonus story. As a side note, I became friends with a guy who worked at a gas station near my job, and he had a room open up the following December, couple who rented a room in his place but had to move. He explained that he was stressed cause he needed get a new roommate to help pay the monthly rent on the place, and he was going to have to have a very annoying co-worker to move in as his only option. Once he finishes explaining, I simply, an abbot snarky now I look back on it, give a short wave and say. Hi. In that, I'm standing right here, kinda way but he was much happier to have me move in than the other guy. He gives me the address and to my shock, it's just a few blocks away from the church with the food bank. The next story is titled No Drama, but multiple people in a sporting goods store thought I worked there. So I have a lot of flashlights I'm a flashlight enthusiast and one of the sporting goods stores I shop at has one of the brands I like. The people tasked with selling them don't know anything. They look at the simplified stats on the side of the box the light comes in and see, 1600 lumens, and, 115 hours, so they'll tell the customer that it runs at 1600 lumens for 115 hours. So as I'm over in the area, I just correct the worker, telling him how it actually is showing the back of the box where the runtime and brightness of each mode is listed in a neat little chart. And that's when the other customer started asking me questions about the lights on display. So I just rattle off the stats and features of each one that I'm familiar with, which was most of them. As I start walking away another customer thought I worked there and asked me where to find something. Then another customer and then a third customer. I was actually disappointed that they all accepted that I didn't work there. The next story is titled Not DoorDash? So, story time. I was not feeling well on Thursday and had credits on DoorDash since a prior order of mine was majorly messed up. I ordered my food for pickup because it was on my way home from work, and wasn't sure where to pick my food up from, since this was my first time doing that. I waited at the host stand, nothing. Another person walked in behind me and was also waiting, an actual DoorDash person. I finally get told where to go by the staff and the bartender immediately invades my personal space and looks at my phone. I'm a very private person, and also not thrilled with people in my space during a pandemic so I was just like, hi. What are you looking for? He was all. Do you not have the confirmation screen up yet? I have to see that before I can give you anything. So the other person and I just look at each other and shrug like WTF is this guy's deal. I get the screen up and show him my order and he grabs it and plops it in front of me. I check my order and thankfully it's all there. He busts out with, so, do you like working for DoorDash? All snarky and with a crap eating grin. No sir. I actually work at, local bank. I'm just picking up dinner. He looked flabbergasted y'all. Like I had the audacity to pick up my own food that I ordered, so I just went home and angrily ate my burger. I think I'm more mad at the fact that this dude does this regularly to other DoorDash people that are the actual drivers, since none of the other staff seem to react to him. Anyways, thanks for letting me rant. The next story is titled Beached. I live in a coastal tourist town. In my town, unfortunately, driving on the beach is allowed. I walk the beach nearly every day, but tend to avoid it on sunny weekends because it's like a damn highway out there and those entitled Bellins act like they have the right of way versus pedestrians. Well, I decided to walk a few miles today anyway, and brave the tourists. As I made my way home, high tide was an hour away and so in addition to parked cars everywhere, the highway of traffic weaving through the soft sand was losing ground rapidly. 
The first two cars I saw stuck in the sand as the tide rushed in. I walked past with a polite, oh darn, look on my face as a half dozen men tried to dig, push and tow them out. The third stuck car is where this story meets IDWHL. The woman runs up to me with a shovel. Who brings a full-size shovel to the beach? Not judging, just curious. I have headphones in but she's clearly approaching me so I silence them. I'm stuck. I need a tow, she hollers. Oh no, that's terrible, I say, shaking my head. Do you have a vehicle to tow me out with? No, sorry. You don't have a vehicle. At this she's looking at me like I'm a toddler with frosting smeared all over my face, telling her I have no idea what happened to the cake. You don't have a car? Sorry, I shrug, I walked here. You walked here? Where's your car? As if walking to the beach was impossible. We aren't on an island honey. Um, at home? I've been digging for half an hour. I see you're stressed, but what's that got to do with me? Oh wow. Yeah, and high tide is almost an hour away. I need a tow. Again, not my job. And even if it were, you're kinda rude lady. So I say, yeah, I mean, if none of the folks here can help you. There were about eight trucks parked on the beach near us. Mostly belonging to fishermen in the surf ignoring all this. There are rescue services in town for cars stuck in the sand. I had continued walking slowly too and now passed her car though all this. What's the number? I don't know. You can google it. What is the name? I don't know. I guess just google town name and beach rescue, or beach tow, or something. Can't you just tow me? Nope. Well why not? I'm stuck. I turn to her with the most innocent surprise I can muster. Oh, I don't drive on the beach. People get stuck all the time out here. It can be pretty dangerous. And with that I clicked my music back on and walked away. I'm not required to be a good Samaritan, and without being asked to help, but rather, help demanded of me, makes that a definite no. The next story is titled Valueless Lady. So my wife and I went to Value Village, I was looking for some nice vintage t-shirts, but no luck. So I wander over to where she is, near housewares. On the way I take a look at this nice convection pizza oven that's there, but it's in hard shape. This crazy lady comes up and goes, oh is that a nice one? I respond with, yeah, but it's seen better days, it had still, before being cut off. It's not an air fryer, they're convection. Well actually this is convection, same as a. Uh. She says, cutting me off again, in this snippy, you're a moron, and stop trying to sell me things, voice, no thanks. I know what I want, and that's not a convection, and she starts to walk away. I shrug, and go, wow, rude. She then gets 10 feet and starts eyeballing the cast iron frying pan I had checked out a minute ago, and says, is this a nice one? I just look at her, dead in the eyes, made sure she could see the annoyance in my face and then turned, and walked away. As I'm telling my wife about this, all we hear is a cascade of cast iron frying pans falling to the floor, clattering all over the place and the sounds of bangs as she throws them back onto the shelf, hard. She also kicked a few under it before she vanished, like a fart in the wind. I don't work there, if you ask me about a thing, don't be rude when I tell you the answer. Especially don't try to keep a conversation up with me after you've been rude. I hope a cast iron pan fell on your foot, you nutter. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel and post some bear emojis in the comments.